What's up guys? Good morning. We are looking at our pump situation for the dump trailer. We have a few different options I'm going to show you and talk a little bit about each one and we'll figure out what we want to do from there. These are the three electric over hydraulic pumps that I have. Um, this first one I actually got off the guy that sold me the dump bed. He said it was off of a uh, pop-up camper. But it looks uh, looks pretty heavy duty, and it actually looks like it's in decent shape. I haven't hooked power to it, um, but it's a Stay Right Industry Webster Electric Company. That's what it says. Um, this is the one that he said he used on this particular dump bed, and as you can tell, it's smashed. And I'm guessing there's probably water in here in addition to hydraulic fluid. So that may have rust in it. Um, and it's hooked up with this pull style dump mechanism. I don't necessarily have a problem with that, um, but I've never used one before. It also already has a mounting bracket on it. Like I said, this is the one that he said he used with that. And this hydraulic line is either bent. They just don't like to bend without cracking, so that makes me a little skeptical of that. Um, this one here I got off of a, a lady that I bought uh, a dump hoist off of. And the dump hoist I got off of her was PTO driven. But she had this off of another, an F-350 dump truck. Alright, so we got three uh, separate hydraulic pumps here. Some people call these power units. Some people call them pumps. Um, essentially they are a reservoir full of hydraulic fluid, a compact pump, high pressure pump, and a 12 volt DC electric motor. The motor has to be switched, it uses high current to pump the fluid. So this is typical, you're gonna see a solenoid that allows low amperage controls, 12 volt DC low amperage controls. This one probably had a switch panel on it. This particular one is a Maxon. A Maxon makes lift gates, so this is probably off a lift gate. So it had two um, had two lead wires off. Uh, probably one was for a either one was on each side of the truck or one was on a handheld remote, something like that. So this was set up for two controls. So you can see they just wire together, it uses one solo. Uh, this cylinder right here came with the dump bed that I'm using. It has a push pull uh, style control on it, so there is no low amperage control of this. You manually would have to push and pull this lever. The seller told me that he had. Uh, basically a bicycle cable hooked up to this, routed into the cab of his truck. So he could push or pull on that. I have tested this, it does not work. Um, he said it worked when it was removed from the truck. It is uh, severely bent right here, looks like it's been dropped. And it is, um, I don't know if that's mud or from a mud dauber or from being thrown in the mud or something, but it's clearly sat in the mud for a while. So the solenoid on this one does, absolutely does not work which is fine, that's not, I don't prefer this style solenoid. Um, it requires some contacts to be clean over time. Before it's exposed, I don't like it. The third option here, uh, the seller included in the dump trailer. Um, this is also a solenoid control. This one has a different style reservoir secured by this band, whereas these ones are bolted on with small bolts. Um, so this one has this solenoid. Um, I tested this solenoid, it is no good. So, <clears throat> um, in addition to that, these have these valves. This valve holds pressure after the pump turns on. So when you lift your dump bed, this uh, valve holding pressure is what allows the bed to stay dumped or the lift gate to stay up or whatever it is that you're using this to power. When you apply 12 volts DC grounded across these two terminals, this valve opens that allows the load to be dropped so that's when you push your down button on your controller that's what allows your dump bed to drop um, this one has one this one has a different style um, i haven't tested those this one here that was apparently integrated into this um, push pull solenoid thing and um like i said this this thing is trash i doubt that works on this one anymore but we'll see um, I have a old battery here that is not reliably giving me 
at one point in time wasn't reliably giving me starting power. I got it off a really old manual uh, Sears Die Hard battery charger. We'll see. Uh, so your fluid's gonna come out of these ports. Just gotta be mindful of that. This is how we test these. Um, so that one turns on and pumps. I actually tested this one the other day. It pumped all the fluid out. It had some yucky looking hydraulic fluid in it. There's no reason to leave it in there. You can see that one starts right up. Um, if we go to the solenoid on this, which is not grounded, trying to ground that to the pump. All right. So we are grounded now. We're on our 12 volt wire and we are clipping our control wire. Nothing, we don't even get to click. Solenoid's bad. Um, that's good. And we can hear that clicking, so that um, that lowering valve is probably still good. It's hard to say without putting pressure on. This one here, so we're going to ground our motor. Ground our motor. So that one comes on. It comes on, it's still spurting a little. This one had water in it. If you look down inside, you can see these components have some surface rust. However, this also had hydraulic fluid in it. So wherever the water and hydraulic fluid level was, which probably changed since it was sitting outside, uh, we may find some rust once we take this apart. Um, this, if this was protected from the weather, this is usable as is, um, because this is just your fill port. That's not gonna have any pressure on it. However, it's less than ideal. It would allow any contaminants to get down in here. So at the very least, you'd want to put some steel wool or something over there. It should have a nice lid on it like these ones do. Now this one, which is, from appearances, the newest of the three, um, looks like it's in decent shape, but it does absolutely nothing. It's got lots of power, just have nothing on the solenoid. So now if we ground our solenoid, you can hear our solenoid click. So the solenoid's good on that one, which is nice. You have one good solenoid, one bad solenoid, one destroyed control unit. We can try that control unit one more time. I'll show you how I tested it. Um, you want to ground this. This entire assembly is bolted together, so it's grounded to itself. Um, this is where your in this is where your input current goes. Is on this stud here. Oops. So. Flipping this back and forth, would, we can make those contacts, and I can see that everything in there is corroded. So that's no good. Um, so from there, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to take apart this pump. Um, like I said, this thing actually it looks like it's in good shape on the outside, but you never know. I bought this used. So this is a bad sign when your bolts are that corroded. All right, so right off the bat, I can see we have really, well, not really, but pretty heavy pitting on this. Um, this is the coupler that spins the shaft and this is the seal you can see there's a bearing in there so the fact that this rusted isn't important but it does show that it's likely been in a moist environment okay so this is our electric motor and this has this has really really heavy corrosion in here as you can see um, I want to see if I can even turn that, and I can while you can hear it. You can hear it grating over there. And if you see the snow falling, it's flurrying a little bit here in West Virginia today. Fighting. All right. So back to this. Let's see. 
So at least it's, it's not seized. Um, not seized, and it could be cleaned up. Go wire brush some of this. And we'll see if that makes a difference. All right, let's go find our our brushes. This is what the, the inside isn't isn't awful. I've seen worse um, and saved saved worse. It, it clearly had. You can see where the. Um, it looks like it must have been in. in if it was in a flood, but the um, the dust and debris that were inside the pump have all settled down. So we will go get some tools and clean that up and see what happens. All right, we got brake cleaner. We got some wire brushes here. We'll see what happens. I got this thing for parts. It was like forty or fifty bucks. And um, if nothing else, it does have a good reservoir. And if I measured the bolt pattern correctly, it'll fit on the um, the working pump off that other one. And it's got a good solenoid too. So we can use it to make a, a couple working pumps. So this may be part of the problem here. These are supposed to be sprung. Um, like this. So they can ride. And these ones here. The springs are gone. On three out of the four. So that is not going to allow that motor to operate correctly. Now, can I test it that way? Maybe. I may be able to wrap a, something around there temporarily and, and make that work good enough to test it. We'll see. There we go. Sound your life out of it at least.
But we got it humming, so it's an improvement over before. But I would say this one is probably never going to run again unless it gets rebuilt. For now, I would say we're going to go forward using one of the other motors for this dump trailer. And we'll probably just scavenge the parts off this.